Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got a very interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. Both of these knives are Winter Blade Co. Factors. This guy down here, a custom USA made factor. And then we have here to hopefully meet the incredible demand uh, of, uh, you know, the knife world, the production, uh, prototype, but production factor made by Bestec. Now, before you ask me, where can I get this? Where can I get this? All right, do me a favor. Look at the date on the video. If you're watching this at the time that I uploaded it, the answer is you cannot get this yet. This was a prototype that was sent to me uh, by Brian. As far as I understand, there will be a website eventually accessible. It is not, as far as I know, accessible in this moment that I am recording it, which is actually a couple of weeks before you're actually seeing it. So understand that uh, it's not something that is accessible, but you, he will be able to do pre-orders in mid to late April. If you are watching this in the future, I would just Google uh, Winter Blade Co. Factor would probably be your best bet. Either way, check him out on Instagram. What's so special about this knife? Well, as far as I know, this is the first time ever in the history of the knife world that we have both a magnetic deployment mechanism and magnetic lock. We've actually got a little magnet here. We've got little magnets down there, which, sorry, the background is causing this not to focus. That sort of sucks this down into place, right? And so this is still wanting to push forward. As you push it forward, it deploys the blade, right? Because it sort of allows you to build up some kinetic energy. And then this disc up here slides into place. This is a magnetic disc, slides into place behind the blade. And you use that to, uh, when you pull down, uh, it releases the blade. So everything here, the lock, the deployment mechanism, it's all magnetic and it works extremely well. Before you get concerned about the life of magnets, the magnets he uses in these knives are, from what I understand, 200 year magnets. Not something that we need to be concerned with. Metal shavings, that's a different thing. We're gonna talk about that, but I just wanted to clarify a little bit. Thank you so much to um, Brian Winters for sending this guy. Thank you so much to the viewer who sent the custom factor in. I appreciate that. Thanks to my generous patrons for supporting me right now. There's a link for Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. I'm gonna move the custom one out of the way here real quick. Uh, and we're gonna do uh, measurements on this guy. We'll bring the custom back in just a little bit. Overall length of the factor coming in at my measurement right here is about seven inches on the dot. The <laughs> <laughs> the tape measure is sticking to the knife because it is magnetic, which believe me, we will talk about that. Uh, blade length, three, anywhere from three and an eighth to 2.9, depending on where you measure it. Uh, you call it a three inch blade. Be careful about areas of the three inch blade law. Cutting edge is about 2.6. Let's go ahead and do uh, some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. Closer in overall length to the, to the uh, Rat 2 but obviously there's more knife here. Up against the Spyderco Para 3, you can see here that blade to handle ratio is very similar, even though we have an, a totally different design. There's only a quarter inch overall difference between these two knives, um, but blade to handle ratio, ratio is very similar. In a lot of ways, this does carry like a Para 3, but then again, it's a totally different shape. So eh, do with that information what you will. I just... Every time this is, this has been in my pocket a lot. Like this has been the knife that's been in my pocket and I can't stop thinking, gosh, this makes me think of my pair of three. It's, it's so weird. Finally, up against the uh, Benchmade Grip Cylinder, in this case, the Ritter Hogue and the Benchmade Bug Out. You can see here it's close to the length of the Bug Out, but still smaller. So action. Yeah, you pull down on this guy right here, disengages it. Goodness, it's smooth. You can reverse flick it. Yes, the reverberation. Uh, will, I believe, be on all of them. I mean, all the prototypes I've seen, the ones that uh, Levon and Nick have, Levon from Knife Nuts Podcast and Nick as in Nick Shabazz, they all do that. Funny story, apparently the reverberation was not intentional. And Bestek had messaged 
Brian saying, do you want us to get rid of that? And he said, no, because people seem to like it. And I agree. <laughs> that reverberation, that little ting is cool. I love it. You might be wondering, well, how reliable is a, uh, how strong is this magnetic disc lock? Believe me when I say this thing is so unbelievably solid. I have actually, and I, this might make you cringe, I've actually gone up here with my palm and tried to flex this. I'm still doing it right now in different directions. That thing does not move. Since there's no spring, right? That's generally the concern is a, that there's a spring that's responsible. No, it's just, it's magnetism. So it's not like it can slip out of place either because of how that thing slides in behind the, the chunk that's cut out in the back. You can see right here, it slides right there on top of that. No, very solid. It's also a very deliberate, uh, deliberate breakaway when you disengage it. And then the, de the deployment, what would normally be like a detent, is also extremely snappy. It, I'll, I can just barely push on this and it's going to deploy because you're building up kinetic energy because this magnet is holding the blade in place and you are overcoming the force of that magnet with this lever bar. And then the magnet that is attached to this bar is being drawn in by the two little magnets that are sitting down here. So one magnet is overcoming another magnet as it deploys, which is freaking crazy. <laughs> it's a reason, I, it's like I've, I've been joking and calling this thing the wizard knife, right? Um, and I, I understand how magnets work. It's just, you know, it's in, in kind of a jokey sense, it takes kind of a modern wizard to put this all together and make it work in a knife and make it work in a way where like that actually feels pretty good. It makes it, it feels organic, right? And then you can also easily kick this thing out with the, you know, middle finger flick and you can do the spidey drop with it. On top of that, the magnets are strong enough to where this thing, seriously, I'm going to stand up. I'm going to stand up and I'm going to whip this thing as hard as I can to try and get that blade to deploy. You ready? I cannot get this thing to come out. That magnetic setup is really, really well done. Really well done. Uh, I like it a lot. No complaints. Sorry. I have this little teeny tiny cut on the end of my thumb from actually the bug out right before the video and it just refuses to quit. So that's really fun. Great when you're reviewing pocket knives, right? Um, so anyways, yeah, the action is amazing. And as you can see here, it's extremely smooth. Extremely, exp extremely smooth. So there's nothing sloppy here compared to the mechanism in the custom, which is the same general idea Sorry, the lights are flickering because we're having a blizzard, apparently. Um, <laughs> there's a lot going wrong in this. I'm reviewing the wizard knife and all of these weird things keep happening that don't normally happen. Um, but uh, yeah, it's the same kind of idea. It's just the breakaway, right? And so his, cu I don't know if in the future his customs will be done differently, but we have the same idea with this magnetic bar. This bar does not come up. There's like a stop on it, right? So, and then your lock is here. Instead of there being a magnetic disc lock, you have to disengage right there. So anyways, the production ones will be like this. Um, let's do thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. You can see here that this guy is not thick at all. It's very thin. Length and height up against the PM2 and the Para 3. Here's another way that it kind of carries like the Para 3. This guy is it's a good thing this is mine. <laughs> the maximum height up there is about the same. It's a maybe, yeah, we put them side to side, maybe. It's actually maybe a little tiny bit taller, right? Oh, we are magnetic, so we're sticking to the knife here. Uh, and uh, But it's definitely shorter than the, uh, I mean, in terms of like lengthwise than the, the PM2. So there you go. Um, anyway, so let's go ahead and do a hardware check. We'll get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. I think this is already equipped with the right one. 
Yeah, we have T6. So, T6 on the body screws and on the pocket clip screws. Yeah, those actually might, I don't know why, but I feel like those are a little bit bigger. We're gonna try a T7. Are they? No, maybe that's just my imagination. It's my imagination. They're all T6. Uh, and then we have a flat head um, screw on the other side, which is kind of random. It's fine. It's really easy to adjust. I would probably prefer just another Torx, right? Um, but that's okay, right? It's the same kind of deal with hinder knives. Like, would a Torx look better? Yeah, but then you have the convenience of being able to adjust it with a coin or the edge of a credit card, or in some cases, your fingernail, right? So it depends on how you look at it. Uh, it's going to bother some people. Inevitably, there will be people down below saying, I don't like it, the whole thing looks futuristic except for the pivot, okay? Um, I don't think it should be a deal breaker for anyone, but mm, that's up to you. Um, and then the other side has like the G10 inlays on both the button and the decorative side of the pivot. Let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness here. Get my calipers out, which are right there. There we go. Uh, it's a pretty thin blade. Very, very thin blade. Let's go ahead and get a measurement here. Make sure we're gripping it in the right place. Well, maybe it just looks a little thinner than it is. It's still coming in at about 120 thousandths, which is not thick. It's just thicker than I thought it would be. Yeah, it's 120,000. So it's a little bit thinner than like the Ritter Hogue. I think the Ritter Hogue is 125. I'll put them side by side so you guys can see and understand why I thought it was such a thin blade. Um, so there you go. And then weight, what are we looking at for materials here? Well, in this case, we are looking at M390, titanium, carbon fiber, and then back here, this little guy is uh, G10, as far as I can tell. Let's go ahead and weigh it. Weight on the factor coming in at 3.32 ounces, so very good ratios, not perfect, but very good. I weigh the custom one here, which I, for some reason, feels like it might be a little bit lighter. No, they're almost exactly the same, just slightly lighter, so that was in my head. It's not that I'm that sensitive to weight, just a fancy guess. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Should we go ahead and move into the review here? Okay. So what is this? When you pull this out, what is this? Well, it's a slot that he milled for a gigantic piece of tritium, if you so choose to put that in there. I think that's kind of neat. Um, I, I gotta admit, I kind of prefer this setup here. This bar that he's got right here is actually carbon fiber. I kind of like, and you can see it back there, there's a little stop. I kind of like the idea of there being a full standoff back here to get to keep this thing from coming out. Why? Because I worry that if it was out, <laughs> two reasons. Number one, maybe I could accidentally break this. And number two, if it's out and I'm not paying attention, <laughs> there's the blade. You don't want to put your finger down. Now, when this is in place, and remember, it's being held down by magnetism. See? When this is in place, there's no way. It's not gonna pop out on its own because you have, you're have you overcoming this force right here, right? You have to pull it past that. The magnet is keeping that. Those magnets down in there are keeping it down there with this, right? I kinda like the idea of there being a stop so that it doesn't do that. I don't know that I want tritium or anything else in there bad enough that I, want it to be able to do this. That might be kind of nitpicky. The other thing that I was, you know, thinking about, and somebody, a few other people mentioned it, and here's the truth. This cutout right here, um, it doesn't affect, like I've been using this thing. In fact, there's plenty of like little scrapes and things on the pocket clip, um, and the blade actually has a nick in it right there. And somewhere else, one nick, yeah, there's a little, maybe a little roll or something up there. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been using this for stuff around the house and it has worked beautifully. Anytime that I have had, most of the time I've been holding it like this, anytime I've had to hold it like this, there being a chunk of the handle missing right there is not really something that I notice and it's because all of these edges are nicely chamfered down. However, he addressed that almost immediately after, you know, me and Nick and Levon did little videos and put them on Instagram and YouTube and worked on a new 
version of this backspacer thing that where the the head of it was was basically just a full filler for this in full thickness. In which case, maybe a secondary stop would allow it to be solid and fill that out. I, I guess, I'm not really sure how he's doing it. This is a prototype, right? So the final production version may include something that fits like a puzzle piece in here, but I don't know, right? Uh, it's, hard, it's hard to say. And if you follow Brian Winters on Instagram, you'll know why I'm saying it's hard to say. It's because the dude is an innovator. It's impressive. You think this is cool? Brian has 10 more golden ideas, at least, that he's, you know, he'll he'll release to the knife world when he's ready. I've seen reverse magnetic switchblades, and I mean OTFs. <laughs> Just like where you pull down and the blade comes out the front and then you push up and the blade goes back in. It's all magnetic, right? He's got other versions of folders. He's got magnetic auto karambits. And this guy is a wizard, right? He's an innovator. He's constantly changing things. Uh, he told me right away when he got these prototypes, he immediately was like, I had to change this or that. And I do, he goes out in his shop and he does that, right? So I'm guessing the final production form of this will be essentially perfect or exactly the way that he envisioned it. But this guy goes over every last teeny tiny little detail in a way that I, I can't even comprehend it. I, I didn't know that we were going to get magnetic pocket knives, right? Um, and then on top of that, I could never have guessed that they would work this well. It feels so organic that me and a lot of people are going, why didn't, why did it take so long for people to, you know, it's one of those hindsight that where you're like a hindsight genius, like, oh yes, I see now. Obviously someone else should have come up with this long ago. Thank goodness for my insight and wisdom to be able to look in the look into the past now knowing that these will exist and say hmm we should have had these that makes me that makes me and anybody else who says stuff like that just sound completely and totally intolerable but <laughs> yeah, yeah it's like wow we just it this kind of makes some things feel obsolete not that we <laughs> god i love living in kansas um, not that we, uh, you know, necessarily need magnets in our pocket knives for everything to work correctly, but it's like, this works so well that it's kind of, it's kind of interesting that we didn't have at least, at least kind of a primitive version of this, but thank goodness for Brian Winters. Um, not, not trying to downplay this at all. This is really amazing. So uh, the ergonomic lines, right? A lot of people wondering, like, it can't really be all that ergonomic. Um, I mean, it's a, you can hold it and you can use it and there's no hot spots because of the flat pocket clip, the corners, everything like that. It's fine. There's just not really a lock-in. It feels like you're holding a smooth rectangle, right? You can get up there and choke up on the blade and it works pretty well. Day-to-day -day for an EDC, right? Even with C-plus ergonomics, it's pretty good. I mean, it's I've never been in a situation where I'm like, oop, I'm going to drop it. Oop, it's going to slip out of my hand, right? Are there knives that have better ergonomic lines? Well, sure, right? Definitely. But I've never found myself in a situation going, I'm being completely and totally hindered by the lack of ergonomic lines. It is a comfortable rectangle. That's what it is. It's no better than that. It's exactly that. It's exactly a comfortable rectangle. So... How about debris, metal shavings? Yeah, I'm gonna tell you straight up, that, that, that may cause issues. If you work in an environment, me personally, I don't work in an environment where I'm worried about metal shavings and things like that, right? Um, if you, you know, over time, are you just, is a regular person likely to come in contact with some tiny bit of debris that is magnetic and will stick on the inside? Perhaps, but it's nothing that taking it apart and cleaning it out couldn't solve. That won't be a problem for the vast majority of people. For people who work in in areas where metal shavings are a thing, um, yeah, unfortunately, it probably won't work for you. That's one of the downsides, I think. Um, it may be a situation where in the future he's able to completely close off any access to the internals from the outside, in which case anything, you know, magnetic would just stick to the outside. And that is, by the way, you know, that's the case, is my, here's this level here. Um, well, the it's supposed to be, hold on. 
quick can I stick it to that is maybe another knife? There we go. Yeah, uh, the knife is definitely magnetic and you can stick this thing to your refrigerator, right? It, it really actually will work as a refrigerator magnet on this side, on the carbon fiber side. For some reason, it's the magnet is much stronger there. Um, but uh, yeah, it's gonna stick to things that are metal and, and that are magnetic metal. Um, and if you work in an environment with metal shavings, it might be kind of a problem. So you need to be aware of that. Uh, the blade is unbelievably thin. This is a razor thin, just mega stupid box destroyer. This thing is ready to go. Very happy with the blade shape, draw cuts, things like that. It is fully flat ground. We have a nice chamfering up here, so no unnecessarily sharp edges till we get down here. But then again, your finger's never gonna be in contact with that. Bestek did a great job with this. This knife proves that with the right person behind the information that they need to transfer saying, you know, basically the blueprints of this, the right person behind the blueprints, Bestek is absolutely capable of some pretty serious, uh, pretty serious work. Uh, it says M390 and Winter Blade on the outside. Pretty cool. Um, I also like how it says Factor right here. The font and the placement of everything kind of goes along with the theme. This looks like, you know, somebody from the future. It looks like their utility knife. It's like somebody who works on a spaceship, on a space station, right? This looks like something that would be carried by that person, right? Um, it's, it, it, I mean, it, it literally looks like the future of utility blades <laughs> and it works that way too. It is incredibly easy. You can see I'm doing this with my left hand. No problem, lefties, no problem. He's even milled holes for the clips, right? It's kind of like a, uh, you know, we're a button lock. It's like it's made for a right-handed person, but lefties can easily manipulate it. Yeah, it's also, whatever satisfaction you're getting out of watching it, multiply it by 10 and that's the satisfaction you're going to get playing with this thing. It, it's awesome. Moving on here, um, the backspacer is kind of this deal right here. So, and then there's also, this is sort of the lock ramp. You can see how the blade sort of interacts. It's not really a stop pin. It's more of a stop ramp that just lines up with the tang of the blade. Works well though, incredibly solid. Uh, and we are running on um, bearings. I don't know if I can get in there and show you, but there are bearings and I'm looking to see if you can see the little spaces in them. Well, anyways, it's running on bearings. Pocket clip, fantastic, straightforward design. Super functional, utilitarian. Well, functional. So it's, I'm just so used to saying utilitarian after functional. Very functional pocket clip, not super deep, not super shallow, correct depth. This just straightforward rectangle pocket clip um, actually goes with the theme of the knife because the, the knife is very rectangly, right? It works, it looks good, right uh, depth, not a hot spot because there's no rise in it, corners are knocked down, and there's a, underneath, the bill has a continuous ramp. So easy in and out of the pocket, really, really good. Um, let's see here. Yeah, it's kind of weird that they did that, you know, with the, the flathead screw uh, head there, but okay. Um, like I said, lock up completely and totally. And I'm talking like, even when I just do this, even when I just let it slowly, blunk, freaking completely solid. This thing, I, I know with stuff like this, people worry like, but is it really gonna lock out solid? I don't know, like this is a brand new lock and it's this new innovation. Is it actually gonna lock out solid? Yeah, yeah. If you think about how this, slides into place, magnetic tension is holding it in there and it's also sitting on top of a flat surface. And then back here, this ramp is cut the same way as the tang of the blade. As far as I can tell, it's not moving. Again, slow, just just this, just ever so slight. No movement, no movement whatsoever, no movement. No bluff, that is solid, wonderful. Pivot lash, no, none. Detent, well, it's magnetic, but there you go. Easy to deploy. Because this is one magnet overcoming another, it is easy to deploy. But that magnet, that, that magnetic detent, whatever you want to call it, is so strong, like I said, you're not going to whip this thing out. It's just not going to come out. Centering. 
pretty darn good. I may have, it may have slightly come off from me, you know, flipping it over and over again. In any case, the fit and finish, sorry about that, is great. This is a super cool knife. It's not going to be for everybody. Uh, it's also still going to be expensive. How much is this going to cost? Sounds like it's gonna be about $375. Oh my God, listen. Um, I can't imagine this is a cheap thing to make, no matter where you make it, right? I'm gonna be for real with you guys. This is one of those knives where it's so different. I cannot, there's nothing I can compare it to. There simply is not a point of reference when it comes to pricing something like this. His customs, I wanna say his customs are, are reasonable. And again, the, when I say custom, I mean made one at a time in the United States. I wanna say they're around 500. I could be totally wrong about that. Obviously, depending on the materials you choose, it could be more than that, right? His pricing may have changed. I don't know. The custom may include some unique or operating system or a different lock or something like that. It just depends, right? His, what, what locks the blade out and what deploys it seems to change depending on how, how he's feeling that day, right? I mean, this one's got a little levery thing on it and it locks like this with a little peg thing, which also is completely and totally solid, right? Um, but yeah, I have no point of reference here. So when I, when I say, take this with a grain of salt, when I say that I think the price is good, it just means <laughs> I, I'm guessing it's not cheap to make. It is M390 titanium carbon fiber. It's made by Best Deck, and it is a, it's going to be an extremely desirable and competitive knife in that general price territory because not only is there nothing else you can buy like this in that price territory, there's nothing else you can buy like this anywhere. You cannot go get this, right? You can't. Don't expect to see it, <laughs> don't expect to see this thing easily cloned, right? I, sh I, I, I feel like, you know, it's gonna be the real thing or it's gonna be nothing, as it should be. Um, this is super cool. Ergonomics, like I said, about a C plus, it's a smooth rectangle, but it'll work. Um, I wish there was a stop on this. Definitely would like to see something fill this area out. Um, and if you work in an environment where there are going to be metal shavings, you're gonna be in for a rough time, right? Outside of that, this is gonna work for everybody, lefties included. This is wonderful, it's flat out wonderful. It's going in two playlists. The factor, no matter what, I mean, let me say this before we end. Follow him on Instagram. He is a knife maker and designer to watch. Uh, it, my prediction is, is that Brian Winters is going to become a very, very well-known person in the knife world very quickly. Um, and I, uh, I would imagine that that will extend beyond this little enthusiast corner that you guys are in right now, right? We're in a very small corner of the overall knife world. I would imagine Brian Winters and these magnetic knives are gonna become well-known, uh, no matter who you are. You've been here for a while, you're a new person, right? You're somebody who just likes to go knives, buy knives from Cabela's, or you're somebody that is in the forums and the buy-sell trading and the boutique, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, um, this is excellent. Uh, recommendable knife, it's not just a fidgety, you know, goofy thing. No, this is actually gonna work really well day to day. Um, not that you need it, not that it's that, you know, that you have to spend $375 on a uh, magnetic pocket knife in order to get any sense of utility or utilitarian convenience, no. But, you know, if you're gonna spend that much, <laughs> and if you like the idea of having something that's unique and convenient at the same time, oh, oh yeah, definitely. So, it's gonna go on my recommended knives playlist, and it's also gonna go on my favorite knives of all time playlist, because come on, like, of course, this is way too cool. That's gonna be pretty much it. Uh, thanks again to Brian Winters and the gentleman who sent me the custom. I really appreciate that. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives. They're either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.